Hello, Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm very excited about this Rich Dad's world. And as you know, the economy is changing at very high rates of speed. And this is a very exciting time for some people. But this could also be the biggest disaster for others. And the reason why this show is so, so important is the theme of the show is that bull markets, you know, when markets are going up, rising markets look, make stupid people look smart. Let me say that again. The theme of this show is when the economy, and I had, I had hand surgery here, when the economy is going up, even stupid people look smart. And my, my friend today will be John McGregor. He's a recovering certified financial planner working for the dark side, Wall Street. And um, we're gonna be talking about how stupid people, um, how a rising market made stupid people think they're smart. And I was talking to John again, he's from Hawaii like me. How can highly educated people be so stupid? How can highly educated people be so stupid? Well, there's many reasons is because they think they're better than us. You know, they, they think they're above the law. They can do what they want. You know, like my poor dad with his PhD thought he was superior to all people, although he was flat broke. And my rich dad who had no financial education who Kim met was one smart dude. So that's why I'm happy talking to rich dad's world and all this, because what happens in a market crash the really smart people get really rich. The, in a crash, the really smart, the financially astute. The reason we have Rich Dad's World, the reason we have the cash flow games, the reason we write our books, is it's time for really smart people, financially smart people, financially prepared people to get very rich. Anyway, that's the theme of the show. A bull market makes everybody who is stupid smart. A crash makes the stupid people look stupid, but makes the highly ed the, the people who are educated and prepared very rich. So you can ask Kim, we make most of our monies in crashes. Is that correct, Kim? Yes, we do. And, and to your point, Robert, about you know the, the, the financially astute versus the smart academics, I mean, when we always, but especially when we were starting out, everybody thought we were stupid. They thought we were crazy <laughs> because we were doing everything almost opposite of what the traditional financial world was doing. And I was talking to John earlier and he said, even the traditional financial planning, it just doesn't work today. So we've always been told we were stupid or crazy and didn't know what we were doing. I guess we were told we didn't know what we were doing because we did not follow traditional financial advice. And that made all the difference. I just can't believe how stupid highly educated people are financially. So John, as uh, at the risk of throwing your own compadres, your buddies under the bus, what's your personal opinion of people like Kramer or Abby Joseph Cohen, who are the authorities in the financial stock markets and bond markets? Yeah, well, it's it's great to be with you guys. Always fun to uh, get on these calls with us, uh, with you guys. Um, you know, it was the great, not was, is the great Thomas Sowell who said in every disaster throughout American history, there always seems to be a man from Harvard in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Man, I wish that guy would run for president. But um, <laughs> yeah, I remember the story you told me a long time ago. One of the top big five CPA firms told you to sell all your real estate. Yes, we had a meeting uh, with our financial planner, our financial strategist, and he brought the big wig in from New York. And this was, yeah. the, special, this was the top guy, and he was, yeah, yeah. was going to tell us what to do and, and, and straighten everything out. And so the first thing out of his mouth was, he said, um, well, looking over your portfolio, um, I believe you are too heavily invested in real estate, and you should sell most of your real estate and put it into stocks. That's amazing. We, we thought it was a joke. We thought the guy was pulling a joke on us, yeah. but he was for real. He was for real. He wanted us to sell everything and put it into stocks. Crazy. But all these CPAs are the elite. Yeah. They're very high. To be a CPA, you got to be very smart. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. 
attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Go to richdadfree.com. You know, I mean, very smart. So these guys are telling Kim and I, who are dumb shits, but don't have our degrees in finance, yeah. telling us to get rid of all our stock, I mean, our real estate, yeah. and we're paying no taxes. Yeah. They never ask, well, how do you guys get away with not paying taxes? Well, we invest in real estate. They don't wow. understand that. And these guys are CPAs. Before we go any further, John, give us your background. What is a CFP, Certified Financial Planner, and why are you recovering one? <laughs> yeah, I, I've gone through the 12-step process to recover from that. Um, <laughs> but uh, Certified Financial Planner is the equivalent of a CPA. It takes years to be able to to be even able to qualify and sit for that exam. It's a two day exam, it's exhausting. It goes real deep on a lot of different topics. Um, so it's very, very comprehensive. The problem is, although the information is good, it's relevant, it doesn't get to the core of why people continue to struggle financially. And that's what the financial industry is missing. So to answer your question, Robert, and you know me well enough, I'm so politically incorrect. Jim Cramer, Abby Joseph Cohen, uh, Janet Yellen, uh, Powell, all these smart people in the room, right? They all just think they're smarter than everybody else because they don't have any answers to what's going on. And anyway, John, I can and, go on and on. But And John, Janet Yellen went in front of that same Congress. Yeah. And here's inflation going through the roof and oil. And Kim and I don't own oil companies. We own oil production. We actually own the oil. So oil went from $30 a barrel to $130 a barrel in one day. That means we had a 400% increase in cash flow. But it also destroyed the poor and middle class because all economies run on oil, food, and fuel. So in the microeconomy, you have this yuppie standing there in front of their leased SUV, pumping gas in, looking at the gas meter going up, do, 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 the gas pump. Gee, why is prices going up so high? As they sit there chewing on their fried chicken they got from the uh, food mart at the gas station, yeah. and they use a maxed out credit card, and they're hoping the next election will save them. Yeah. That's the American public. That's micro, but macro, they're being screwed left and right. So a lot of times the talks I do are not micro, they're macro. Right. Let me just say this much, one of the problems with macroeconomics is you can't see it. You really, you haven't been to an oil well to see the oil coming out of the ground. And every barrel makes Kim and I richer, but unfortunately it destroys the world. And, and the Robert, problem. yep. And Robert, I think to that point, so many people in that situation are waiting for somebody else to fix it instead of taking control of them, of their Amen. own world. So you want somebody else to fix it instead of, doing what they need to do to take care of themselves. And if I could so shamelessly plug Rich Dad's world, for those of you who think you better start fixing it yourself, that's what the Rich Dad World's program is. That's the cash flow games. That's our books. John, what is the name of your book? Um, well, the first book is The Top 10 Reasons the Rich Go Broke. And it's, it's powerful stories. People I knew, you knew in Hawaii that had everything and then lost it. All. Not just Hawaii, but people that I worked with that had everything and then lost it all. So although it's a book about why the rich went broke, it's really about why everyone goes broke because it's the same underlying psychological issue that so many people have. So, so just because you were rich yesterday doesn't mean you're rich tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? 100%. 100%. Yep. Continue on, just Kim. Because I just you're not to rich today, and just because you're not rich today doesn't mean you can't be rich tomorrow. <laughs> Correct. And that's, let me say it again. A bull market and a bubble market really is what it is, makes stupid people look smart. Yep. But a crash makes them look stupid and they can't admit it. Yep. That's why Kramer and Abby Joseph Cohen and Yellen, they can't talk about what's really going on because they'd have to look stupid. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the people who go to Rich Dad's world have a chance because when the market crashes, it's going to be and it's a possible depression, but the next depression may be the biggest opportunity you ever have or wipe you out. It's your choice. Any I'm comments? I'm looking forward to it, actually. I mean, I, I don't want people to be hurt, but from, a, from an opportunistic standpoint, I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of opportunities, which means it's going to get really ugly 
very quickly, um, way worse than it is now. You know, case in point, I, I can remember I was in, uh, in 2007, I was in Puerto Rico for an investment conference and Alan Greenspan, the guy who walked on water, right? Everyone just thought he was, you know, godlike. And he was up there, he gave this long 60 minute, who knows what he was talking about. No one followed him, no one could understand him. And finally he went to Q and A, this is 2007. And the first question was that everyone was wanting to hear, is what do you think is gonna happen in the real estate market? And he said, nine months before the crash, we've looked at it. Yes, there are pockets. There might be a problem here and there. But overall, we think the, uh, the real estate market is solid. And we all know what happened nine months later. That's Alan Greenspan. And everyone worshipped him as the greatest economist this planet has ever seen. So it's just a perfect example of these elites who think they're so smart because they went to an Ivy League school or they got a PhD or whatever, and they 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 kind of hang around in their own little circles. They don't know what's going on outside the real world, and um, and that's what leads to so many of these problems. And if I could add to that, John, and we we're talking about was it last night, whatever I was talking to you, yep. I ask you this question: How come they can't admit they made a mistake? Uh, and yeah, that's yeah. because they think they're smarter than everybody. Absolutely. And, you know, academics, if you, you admit you're a mistake, you're a loser, you're a failure. Yeah. But they can't talk about it. This is the other point, you know, John, how many fund managers, you know, are going to stand up there and said, sell everything? Oh, no, no. And most people don't realize this. When they invest in a mutual fund or an investment with an investment manager, and we all seen them on television, right? We do things differently and all that stuff. Most of them, 99% of them have a mandate to stay fully invested in whatever strategy they're in. So even if they knew a missile was coming over from Iran or wherever, or World War III was going to break out, these money managers, by mandate, by prospectus, have to stay fully invested, even if they had a crystal ball showing that everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket. And, right. and that's what happens. People wake up one day and they turn on the television and they see this massive market crash and they look at their 401k account and it's in half. I mean, that, that has happened. So, and, so, uh, so, fund manager, so if fund managers are, are seeing that the market is crashing, they will not take your, their, your money out of the stock market? That's correct. That's correct. Most are required. So the, the reason the log, their logic behind it, Kim, is you hired us to manage growth stocks. And that's what we're gonna manage on your behalf. You didn't hire us to manage cash or bonds or gold. You hired us to manage these types of stocks and that's what we're gonna do, no matter what's going on. Now, there are, there are a handful, a small percentage of mutual fund managers or money managers that can move some into cash if they think things are gonna go bad. But most of the time, about nine out of 10 times, those money managers are required to stay fully invested in the market that they manage, the type of market that they manage. And also, if I could add this, John, by the way, Rich Dad does not give financial advice. Right. We're not saying sell. The reason we have John on this is because he's a recovering certified financial planner. Yeah. And it makes you sick, doesn't it, what you see going on? No question about it. Absolutely. And so the other, the other part about it is, is when they're fully invested, they also can't get out. Like there's a thing called REITs, R-E-I-T, Real Estate Investment Trust. They're so illiquid, they couldn't get out anyway. Mm -hmm. And and my concern is, you know, this work at home issue is coming up. You know, real estate's a very big subject. There's residential, there's warehouse, there's uh, office buildings, there's retail and all this. But the office building REITs, Real Estate Investment Trusts, they're so fully vested and people are not going back to work. So I look at these office building trusts, they can't get out. That's what John is saying. They can't get out even if they wanted to. Any comments, John, on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just look at these shopping malls and strip malls, um, office buildings. Like you said, people aren't going to off in, into offices anymore. I mean, what are they going to do with these shopping centers that are just vacant? I mean, I see them around here. It's crazy. It's really scary. You know, yeah, if, so, if somebody can figure that out, how to repurpose those shopping malls, how to repurpose commercial op, commercial office, I mean, there's a huge opportunity there. And I know right. there's all sorts of discussions happening about that. Well, yeah, think yeah, about so these large retailers, JCPenney, Kmart, Sears. I mean, that's millions of square footage of, of just yeah. empty space. What do they do with that? 
so the, the point here is this, is when they see real estates crashing, the reason we have rich dad's world, you have to know what segment of real estate's crashing. Exactly. Exactly. That's a very big differential there. And so I was, I was cruising Macy's yesterday. Everything is on sale. I was at Walmart. Everything is on sale. So the retailers are getting crushed. So those big box, you know, the, you know, Kim, do you remember when Rob, uh, when we were in San Diego, what was his name? Yes, Larry's right. friend, Rob. Rob, Rob McMillan. Everybody wanted to get into big box stores. This is 30 right. years ago. Yep. Today, everybody wants to get out of big box stores because online shopping is killing them and the customer is going broke. Yep. But to your point too, Robert, about you know what kind of segment, what, what real estate segment is it? Because some real estate segments are doing great right now. I mean, right. you and I were in, you know, a couple of years ago, we were looking at the Port Authority in, in uh, Georgia because warehousing is going to, is growing like wildfire. Um, our other friend Craig was looking at a deal for us, which is industrial. And that's, and that's doing really well in the Phoenix area. The other and thing we're investing in besides oil, you know, cause I have, Kim and I have no stocks or bonds, no ETFs, no funds, you know, except things that we started because we're entrepreneurs and cap, we're venture capitalists is what we are. And so the other thing we invested in is Wagyu cattle food. And I go, why, why goo? Because it's a brand. And the rich will always have money. The poor and middle class will have to eat ground turkey <laughs> or fake beef. Do you know what I mean? So we invested, Kim and I invested in Wagyu cattle. We actually bought the calves and all that. And because that's food. And people have to eat. You may not like to eat beef. You can eat your fake beef or whatever, fake chicken, but the rich will always order a brand. So there's so many distinctions which education is supposed to give you that makes you smarter no matter what happens in the economy. And that's why we have Rich Dad's World to get the basic information out there so you can either take control of your own finances or let some college-educated person from Stanford or MIT do it for you. Robert already warned us, 2023 is going to be the year of lost wealth. After all, Goldman Sachs predicts you'll see zero returns from stocks for the rest of 2023. And investors like you have already made a record number of emergency hardship withdrawals from the 401ks. Now, a stunning survey reveals that over half the Americans making six figures are living paycheck to paycheck, combined with tens of thousands of layoffs in just the last few weeks. It becomes clear that a financial storm is brewing and no Nobody is safe. But if you think brilliant investors like Robert are letting their money waste away in a 60-40 portfolio, think again. For years, Robert and other experts have been investing millions into low correlation assets that can still climb when the stock market flatlines. And according to a recent Citibank report, of the major asset classes, the lowest correlation belongs to art. In fact, experts say just a 5% portfolio allocation to art can both increase returns and lower volatility. Now, you can easily get that allocation in your own portfolio without needing millions, thanks to Masterworks, our longtime partner. Their platform lets you invest in shares of paintings by icons like Picasso and Banksy. Every single one of Masterworks' exits to date have delivered positive returns to their investors, with three recent exits delivering 10, 13, and 35% net returns. No wonder over 700,000 users have invested more than half a billion dollars on Masterworks. Offerings have sold out in minutes, but Rich Dad listeners can skip the wait list by going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. Today's show is sponsored by Gold Alliance. If you're concerned about high inflation, looming recession, a troubled banking system, or out-of-control spending in Washington, this is an important message to hear. Because the fact is, during every major crisis in U.S. history, many of those who failed to prepare watched their savings, investments, or retirement funds go down, while many with the foresight to own gold helped preserve their purchasing power. Gold even made some folks richer. Now we're facing several major crises at once, and experts say we 
may soon face even more economic trouble. So please don't wait. Learn the simple way you can diversify with gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind, even in uncertain times. The new free 2023 Gold Guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Find out why and visit freegoldguide.com slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait. Access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Any comments, John? (laughs) You just nailed it right there. I think the key there, the overarching theme of kind of what we're talking about is regardless of what's going on in the world, there are always, always opportunities. And you cannot rely on somebody else to find them for you. You've got to do your own work. Um, And yet people are just either their heads in the sand or they're completely unaware of what's going on in the real world. Because like you said, they're not, they're in the micro world, you know, they're worried about the so ticket, ad- oh, the ticket okay. advice from C- certified financial planners. Right? <laughs> That's why so you're recovering ask- CFP. If I could add that to yeah. the back, exactly what you're saying. The reason does rich dad world is my rich dad was my coach. I mean, he slapped me around the place, yelled at me, called me stupid. He was tough. But rich dad's world about it, not, not that they're mean, but people like me needed a coach. Yeah. And the other reason Kim and I created the cash flow board game is the way my rich dad taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And as Maria Montessori says, or the Montessori school system says, what the hand does, the mind remembers. So if you're just getting words, mm-hmm. it goes in left ear, comes out right ear. Mm-hmm. And so you have the cash flow board game. You actually have to do something. So you have Rich Dad's world. I mean, I have a co. I had a coach. You know, Kim and I had a fantastic coach who, Frank Crary. And the reason Kim and I now own partners in one of the biggest, richest gold mines in the world is because of Frank. We had great coaches, right, Kim? We did, and and they would say things or show us things or do things with us that actually did change our thinking about how we operate. Um, but again, it's, it's people have to sometimes get uncomfortable because when you're learning something new, it can be uncomfortable. So, but again, to your point, if you have coaches and mentors, oh my God, if there's any shortcut to learning, for me, it's coaches and mentors. So Rich Dad World is specifically in real estate and other financial matters are your coaches. They're great people. John, who was your personal coach? How did, who affected you? I've had several. I mean, you guys are certainly one of them. Um, and I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad many, many years ago, and that was a game changer moment for me. I've had my, my, my father, um, who's been a great mentor, my grandfather. But when I look back, what was really interesting is it was a mentor in a roundabout way. And it, it was really sort of the genesis behind my book, Why the Rich Go Broke. And I was landscaping um, in between courses at the University of Hawaii. I'd come back from New Zealand. I was just taking some classes part-time and I was landscaping for uh, make some money. And we showed up at a, my favorite house. It's on Holly Koa Ridge. Beautiful, looking overlooking the ocean. And it was just the dream home straight out of a magazine. And I finally finished and I asked my boss, Larry, I said, what do they do? And he said, do you really want to know, do you really want what they have? I said, absolutely. That's why I'm out here in 90 degree weather going to, going to class as well. And he said, well, go up and take a look in the kitchen. And I walked up, walked up this beautiful grass, looked in the kitchen, and all I saw was a paper plate, and a pot kettle, a kettle on the on the on the uh, stove, and a rolled up futon in the corner. I was like, "What gives? These people must have just moved in." I, so I went back to Larry, and I said, "What's the deal?" He said, "Well, they're flat broke. 
He said they spent money like they like like they were never it was never going to end. He was a political consultant, and then his his candidate lost, got in trouble. She was an up and coming realtor, and then she got cancer. And now I said, where are they right now? He said they are living in the sister's basement, hiding from creditors. They are flat broke, and yet on the outside they looked amazing. The nice cars, the car, uh, the backyard, uh, everything was just beautifully set up. And that's when Larry said to me, who's still mowing yards this day, he said, John, you'd be surprised how many of these beautiful houses that we're working on are one paycheck away, one commission check away from going under. And he said, John, too many people are trying to keep up with the Joneses. He said, and then he said the second part, he said, but the problem is the Joneses are broke as well. And, and when I heard that, that was the game changer epiphany moment, another epiphany moment in my life that made me realize that I will never put myself in that situation. And that's when I set out to become financially free by the time I was 40. And I, uh, I hit my goal at 37. And it, that story, that moment um, still gives me goosebumps when I tell that story. Um, I kind of consider a, a mentor as, as well, um, not, not just an individual, but it was a story, it was an experience I went through. So. So if I could go on about Rich Dad's World, because that's what they offer. And I think soon you're going to see a huge real estate crash coming up, just like gold and silver will crash. By the way, this is real gold here. That's about 2000 bucks. And this here is real silver. It's about 37 bucks. And this here is a fake silver quarter. You can tell by its copper. It's the same color as this copper. We have so much fake money floating right now. That's why the economy is floating. But when that baby comes down, all the stupid people who looked smart when it was floating up will look stupid. The problem is, as the theme of this show is, educated people cannot admit they made a mistake. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to, say that the theme of this show is when they started printing fake money, which this quarter is fake, this it went fake in 1964, they violated a law called Gresham's Law. And what Gresham's Law says is when fake money enters a system, good money goes into hiding. But that what that set up, so this here is real gold. And I bought my first gold coin in 1972 in Hong Kong. Uh, South African Kruger in, paid 50 bucks for it. Today it's worth 2,000. That's the, not that the gold went up, the dollar went down. So my point here is this, the reason you have Rich Dad's World is real estate's a very big subject. You can have warehousing, office buildings, uh, shopping centers, op, you know, everything. But the one thing that's causing people to grow broke, exactly as John says, they're hanging on to their freaking houses. You know what I mean? The housing is vital. Gas is vital. So is food vital. Walmart's going broke. Target's going broke. But they'll hang on to their house. Now, this is the rule on real estate. Real estate depends upon jobs. Interest rates are going up and down. I don't really care. People will fight for a place to live. So if they move that, they lose that big house that John talks about and there are lots that will, those big houses are opportunities. But what Kim and I and Ken McElroy invest in are apartment houses, right, Kim? Yeah, it's like, it's like people need oil, people need food, people need timber, people need a place shelter. to live. They're always gonna need shelter, always. And we never, and, and you, know, you also have to look at, there's so many nuances to real estate. And one of the things we've always done, Robert, with Kenny, as you know, is we don't go for the high end. We don't go for the luxury apartments because if the economy turns, those people move down and they then they downsize to a, a, a B apartment and middle apartment, which is where we specialize. So there's a lot to learn. But if you if you're educated and you're ready and when this crash comes, then you're going to see all sorts of opportunities. If you're not educated, it's just going to run right by you. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing you said, Kim, because while well, the market hasn't crashed yet. Well, you want to get ready for it. You know, yeah. if if I was going to say, okay, I'm going to turn pro golfer, but I, I won't turn pro until I'm ready to hit the ball. <laughs> I'm not going to win. So we have Rich Dad's world here. Start practicing. Start learning. Residential is, 
I mean, I think I think I was cracking up, Johnny said those big houses are empty. Yeah. It's gonna flush their kids out of their basement. <laughs> oh yeah. They're gonna need they're gonna need homes. Yeah. That's I mean, gonna force a lot of kids into their parents' basement. <laughs> John, these kids can't find jobs. Oh, yeah. Because Biden's paying them not to work. Yeah. So the residential property, I mean, Kim and I are sitting fat and happy, just like we are with oil. Yeah. The more they the more they raise, they the more they cut pipelines off, Kim and I get richer, but America gets poor. People yeah. poor and middle class all over the world get poor. But that's why I created the cash flow board game, wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad, why you wrote what, the 10 reasons why uh, the rich go broke, is they don't have really good financial education. And most of them are listening to people with a vested interest in selling them something. Yes. So before you start buying real estate, when the crash comes, I would start practicing today. Yeah. Any comments on that, Kim? Well, and, and on top of that, if you are invested in some real estate, um, we never stop learning, you and I. Um, but there's all sort, there's so many different avenues and you've got to understand where the opportunity lies and what sector it lies, in what town it lies. You know, you can talk about Arizona. Well, parts of Arizona are booming and parts of Arizona are dying. So you've got to understand there's just so many nuances. And that's why, that's why we... Uh, we love Rich Dad World and the education and the mentoring that they give. That's why Robert and I and John are, are educators of financial literacy. That's why we do what we do, because, you know, I, I always say I, I can't control the U.S. economy. I can't control the global economy, but I can control my own personal economy that I can control. And that takes education that sometimes takes being uncomfortable. It takes a lot of learning and it takes a lot of mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes, all of us. So. Hello. So back up what Kim says, we can all see the micro economy. We often can't see the macro because yes. it's invisible. Because invisible, because macro is historical. So every time when the Chinese government did this, they took good money and turned it fake. The Chinese were the first to print paper money. It brought down the Chinese empire. When the Romans did this, it brought it's Gresham's law again. When fake money enters the system, good money goes into hiding. The Roman Empire came down. In 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. It was the end of the American Empire. Gresham's law. And the problem is, 71 was quite a while ago, and all these highly educated people, especially the young financial planners, John, yeah. if they came into the market after 2008, they have never seen a bear market. Yeah. Am I correct on that? They've never seen inflation. They've never seen a bear market. Um, and this goes all the way back to the 70s, right? A lot of people born, you know, mid to late 70s, they haven't seen any of this pain and suffering that so many of us have seen. So they, they think it's just one big utopia. Um, but, but, you know, you talk about macro, and I couldn't agree with you more. And Kim, you mentioned it's mindset. I, I, I see macro as mindset. But the problem is, and we've seen this speaking around the world together, people come up to us at these conferences and like, John, what do you think about crypto? Should I get into it? What, what, what do you think about day trading? Should I start doing that? What do you think about multi-level marketing? And they run off and uh, with, without thinking the big picture, without having the mindset. And it, it, it just ends in a disaster most of the time because they okay. haven't taken the time to really study and, and really they, learn. And they haven't seen history, John. You know what I mean? Because- yeah. You know, when, when um, after Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, real estate went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing, oh, real estate never comes down. <laughs> real estate never comes down. And my rich dad, that's what my rich dad said to me, said that a bull market or a rising market covers up people's stupidity. But when you have these young people who haven't seen history, like I go all the way back to the Chinese empire, the Roman empire, I studied all of that. Real money and make it fake money, it's Gresham's law, the empire collapses. So the question is who's gonna pay off the 300 trillion in US debt? They said debt is 30 trillion, it's really 300 trillion. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to pay that off. America's bankrupt because 
We just violated Gresham's law. We started printing money. So for me, I think this is going to be a great opportunity because exactly Kim's is when the shopping centers go down, office buildings go down, who's going to, who's going to fill them up? And uh, as Buck, Bucky Buckminster Fuller said, my teacher, he says the biggest office buildings in the world will become low income housing. Yeah. So I, that's how you see the future. That's why you have Rich Dad's World. But you better start practicing now before the crash. I agree. And, and you know, also because sometimes it's unknown and it's unfamiliar, people want to make up a lot of excuses. The latest excuse I've heard over and over and over for the last few months is, oh, I'm not going to buy because interest rates are up. Robert, when you and I started, when I started real estate investing, you started before me, when I started, I think interest rates were like 13 and, and we still cash flowed. So Rich Dad's world is here for you, but you better start preparing today. You're going to be a pro golfer. Don't start the day you tee off. Right, Kim? Yeah, right. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice. A lot, a lot, a lot of practice. A lot of mistakes. Lots of mistakes. Well, just adding to that, you know, the sort of the over, overarching theme of my, of my book and what I talk about is that learning from people's successes is smart, but learning from people's mistakes is genius. Um, I, I, as I always tell people, and this is, an, this is an unpaid endorsement, it's all about mindset. And if they want to get serious about their financial life, I always say play the cash flow game. That really sets the context in place for you then to take the next step and become you know, financially free and independent and, and get off that paycheck, um, get off living on Payne Island. So that's, that's where I'd leave it. And I just think um, programs like this and Rich World and, um, and, 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 and the books, it's so, so important, especially now with what's going on, because we are in unprecedented territory and it's only going to get worse. Now's the time you've got to get prepared. And, and the last thing I'll say is we talk about mentorship that there, there's, I don't think there's anything more important than having a mentor or mentors. Even the greatest athletes in the world have coaches and mentors. So no matter who you are, you've got to get a mentor. And this program is an ideal mentor um, as, as one of your coaches. You know, there's, there have been so many, there are so many changes every day. You wake up and you go, oh, it can't get any, it can't get any crazier than this. And it gets crazier that, that day. But when you look around and you can look around just in your neighborhood, look, look in your street, you'll see all these trends that are changing. You know, everybody wants delivery. That's why Robert and I were looking at warehousing. So there is a lot of opportunity if you've got the skill set and the knowledge and the experience to take advantage of it. And again, that's what Rich Dad, that's what Rich Dad World is all about. Um, kind of training your brain to see opportunities where before you'd, you'd miss them. I right. think. If Kim, if you could get a 20% return on 10% interest. All day long. All, All day, day long. long. <laughs> and that's why when people say, oh, interest rates are 10%, I want to know what inflation is running at. Yeah. It's a little bit more macro. Yeah. So that's, that's a different way of what John calls mindsets, a different way of thinking. This is the most exciting time to be alive. Thank you all for watching this program. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.